On today's episode, we have the latest updates on a number of Tesla products, including the 4680 battery cell, RoboTaxi, and Cybertruck. Tesla solar deployments reach their highest levels in years, and Tesla will finally open their supercharging network in the United States. So, let's get going. On Tesla's recent Q2 earnings call, Elon Musk detailed the current process for ramping up 4680 battery cell production at Giga Texas and their Cato Road pilot plant. Obviously, the 4680 was a hot topic at the most recent shareholder meeting, with a particular focus on production volume for the new cell. So far this year, the production of 4680s has been constrained. We heard Elon say in an interview with Tesla owners of Silicon Valley that problems with the 4680 had actually limited the amount of Model Y vehicles that Giga Texas was able to produce and slowed the production ramp of that factory. Tesla eventually solved the problem by transitioning some vehicle production back to the standard 2170 cell. From what we are hearing now, it seems like Tesla is working out those early stage problems and 4680 production is on track to meet expectations. Tesla's VP of Powertrain Engineering, Drew Baglino, said on the call, quote, We expect to ramp total 4680 production to exceed 1K per week by the end of the year, hopefully before, well before. Just for clarity, he's talking about 1,000 cars per week, not 1,000 cells. So that would be the new Model Y all-wheel drive variant that is coming out of Giga Texas with 279 miles of range. They are using a smaller battery pack in the new Y to maximize the quantity of vehicles they can make with the limited supply of cells. As far as we know, this is the only 4680 equipped Tesla that will be produced this year. So far, the supply of 4680 batteries has been coming exclusively from a pilot production line in Fremont, California. This is on Cato Road, just across the way from Tesla's main factory. The company says that additional cell capacity is coming soon. We've learned that 4680 production will begin this quarter at Giga Texas and will ramp up quickly. Drew Baglino said on the call, specific to Texas last quarter, cell equipment was fully installed and commissioned, and we produced our first commissioning car sets of cells through the end of the line. Our target for Texas is to begin production this quarter and aim for Texas to be capable of exceeding Cato weekly output before the end of the year. And this is particularly impressive because the Cato facility has been ramping up hard since the spring of this year. We know that they got off to a rough start in 2022 with frustratingly low production volume, but Drew reassures that the company was able to turn that around quickly, saying, quote, In Q2 at Cato, we fully automated power conveyance for the dry anode electrode tool there, unlocking major increases in production and improvements in yields. Since March, because of that, Cato's output has grown about 35% month over month each month since, and yields throughout the factory are already at target in most areas and trending in that direction and a few others. And those gains in efficiency will be coming directly to Giga Texas and eventually Giga Berlin as well. So by the end of this year, Tesla should have the kinks worked out of their 4680 production and finally be ready to expand the new cell to more products. Elon Musk confirmed this by saying that he has enough 2170 cells to satisfy all vehicle production for the remainder of this year, and said that 4680 will be important in 2023, but not in 2022. According to Tesla's most recent shareholders update letter, the upcoming RoboTaxi vehicle is now, quote, in development. That's not a whole lot of information, I know, but this is progress. When this vehicle was mentioned in previous company updates, it was referred to only as future product. Now, the RoboTaxi is listed alongside the Cybertruck, 
semi, and roadster as in development. More specifically, the line item is RoboTaxi and others. So we know that Tesla is scheming even further down the road. The most that Elon would say about these upcoming vehicles was, quote, future products that we're not quite ready to talk about now, but I think will be very exciting to unveil in the future. This also confirms Elon's previous statement that the RoboTaxi will be an entirely new vehicle design. For a long time, we expected that Tesla's fully autonomous vehicle would just be a Model 3 with no steering wheel or pedals. Now, we have an entirely new vehicle to look forward to, and Elon has been hyping this one up, saying, quote, We're also working on a new vehicle that I alluded to at the Giga Texas opening, which is a dedicated robotaxi that's highly optimized for autonomy, meaning it would not have a steering wheel or pedals, and there are a number of innovations around it that I think are quite exciting. But it's trying to achieve the lowest fully considered cost per mile, cost per kilometer, accounting everything. I think it's going to be a very powerful product. Elon Musk is continuing with his message that the Tesla Cybertruck will be ready for production at some point in 2023. During the recent earnings call, Elon said, quote, our team continues to focus on Cybertruck production readiness and some future platform design. We are expecting to be, still expecting to be, in production with the Cybertruck in the middle of next year, and we are very, very excited about that product. I think it might actually be our best product ever. He also cited multiple advancements that Tesla has made over the past year in improving the efficiency and speed of their manufacturing process. And while it can be easy to write that off as Elon making yet another overly optimistic promise, we have some very solid evidence right now to support that claim. Remember back to a couple minutes ago when we talked about the 4680 cell ramp up. Those batteries are key to making the Cybertruck possible. There was never any legitimate chance of seeing a production ready Cybertruck before the battery supply was figured out. And now, according to both Drew Baglino and Elon, 4680 will be in full force for 2023. Add that to the new 9,000 ton Gigapress machine that has been unveiled by IDRA, and Elon has said is specifically for casting the Cybertruck underbody. So, in the past, Elon has absolutely been exaggerating when he said that the Cybertruck was anywhere close to production because there was no batteries to power it and no gigapress casting machine to build it. But things are different now. The pieces are coming together, and for the first time, Elon might actually be correct about the Cybertruck production date. Or at least he's closer to being right than he has ever been before. One of the more surprising bits of information from Tesla's Q2 update was a notable increase in solar deployments. After being down massively in the first quarter of the year, Tesla's solar installation rose to the highest level that we've seen in years. For Q2, the company deployed 106 megawatts of solar panels. That includes the solar roof and just regular solar panels. This is a 25% increase over Q2 2021, and it is the best result from Tesla Solar since the third quarter of 2017. We know that Tesla's solar installation division has been going through a rough patch for a while. The solar roof is an amazing product, and the demand for it is very high, but Tesla has continuously struggled manufacturing and installing the tiles at a rate to match the consumer interest. This has resulted in people having to wait for years to get their Tesla roof. The company has mostly chalked this up to supply constraints, and there's not much they can do to fix that. China has a near monopoly on the production of photovoltaic cells, and global demand is at an all-time high. Still, Tesla says in their recent update that they have diversified their supplier base to finally open up more products and enable new growth in the solar business. Tesla also added that its solar installation team is continuing to improve installation efficiency. 
This results in higher volumes and stronger economics. The other side of Tesla's energy division is battery storage, and deployment for those products are actually down year over year versus 2021. Again, Tesla cites supply issues, in this case, particularly it is semiconductors. Tesla says that demand for their Megapack and Powerwall products remains in excess of its ability to supply them. However, the company did specify that it is currently in the process of ramping production at its dedicated Megapack factory to address the supply imbalance. But unfortunately, nothing specific was said about the new California factory or when it might come online. Until then, the Megapack is still produced exclusively at Giga Nevada. Tesla is reportedly getting very close to the point where they can open up the supercharger network in the United States to all other vehicles. A new report from the Wall Street Journal says that Tesla is applying for federal funding to help pay for the expansion of their charging network. This is part of Joe Biden's $7 billion infrastructure plan to accelerate electric vehicle charging across the country. According to grant documents, in June, California's Energy Agency staff proposed awarding Tesla $6.4 million toward building chargers in rural areas. And a White House fact sheet, also released in June, says that Tesla will, quote, begin production of new supercharger equipment that will enable non-Tesla EV drivers in North America to use Tesla superchargers. We know that this is something Elon has talked about for a while. He never intended the superchargers to be Tesla exclusive forever, and the company has already rolled out a similar program in Europe where any electric car can charge at a Tesla station just by downloading and using the Tesla smartphone app. This is easy in Europe because in that market, Tesla has been installing the CCS standard charging port on all their vehicles. It's the law in Europe that all electric cars have to have the same charging port, which is smart. But this is going to be a little more complicated in North America, where Tesla has their proprietary charging connector and every other vehicle has CCS. Elon has toyed around with the idea of including an adapter at every supercharging station to facilitate CCS charging. There has also been talk of rolling out a native CCS supercharger in the US specifically for non-Tesla vehicles to use at the charging stations. Either way, in order for Tesla to receive a chunk of this new government funding, they have to make their chargers available to all vehicles. So we'll see how that works out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.